Hey everyone, welcome back. Thank you again for joining Scrog School Episode 2. Uh, today we have a few things in store. Um, we're going to be doing talking about the germinating process and releasing bugs into my grow space. Um, last week we discussed setting up my 3x3 living soil beds and we also put the soil in the beds. Um, yeah, so this week we're going to just keep on moving along. I germinated my seeds on Tuesday. It's now Sunday, so after we watch a few little videos, I'll show you guys where we are at now. So, grab your bongs, grab your joints, get lit, sit down, relax, enjoy the episode. Okay, so today we're going to start by releasing nematodes. Nematodes are pretty important. They live in your soil. They just eat like, they eat a lot of different kind of things, like even decaying organic matter, but they also eat like baby insects, thrips, the larvae, the lar like all like the little eggs, everything in the soil, these things are going to eat. And they have pretty crazy ways of like doing that, how they like, approach insects, crawl inside insects. Just the way they kill things is just crazy. We can't see it because it's under a microscope to see this kind of stuff, but it's pretty wild. And I'm just happy that they're not the size of us because it would be a really scary world to live in if that's the case. So let's just jump to it. Nematodes. As today we're going to be adding my beneficial insects. The first ones we're going to be adding is the nematodes. So with that being said, what I gotta do first is get one liter of water and put one liter of water into this pail right here. This is the first step. Okay. That's one liter, one liter bang on. You, you can even see my marks. Well, it's all measured there, but anyways, okay. Okay, so we got one liter of water. Inside this little pouch right here comes two sponges. Today we're gonna be using one of the sponges. The other sponge I can put right back in my refrigerator for up to 14 weeks. Okay, so throw that away. With this sponge is what we gotta use to just soak in this water. But for the first step is you wanna get this bag. You wanna soak the bag in the water and, and get all this stuff out of the bag because there's gonna be nematodes sitting inside this bag. So you wanna give the bag a good little flush, good little flush around. Okay, that's probably good. We'll do one more. Okay, get all the water in there. Rinse it all out. Okay, now with the sponge, you can see that, that, that goopy brownie kind of stuff. That's what we want, that's the nematodes. So I'm just gonna like kind of shake, shake the big chunky stuff kind of off there. And then you just gotta start squeezing it like a sponge. Work it just like a sponge. This specific uh, nematode blend that I'm using will quickly control immature stages of fungus gnats and thrips. The cool thing about these nematodes is that they actually attack soil pest larvae by entering through the natural body openings like the noses, eyes, who knows what else. But they get into the body openings and once inside these nematodes release uh, some kind of bacteria that quickly kills the pests. Another crazy thing is that once they're inside the pests, that's where they uh, that's where they do all their reproduction. So they lay their eggs inside the pests that they kill. And then that's how they uh, repopulate your soil with new nematodes. So these things do repopulate. So I just want to do this, so like I want to like take it out of the soil at least 10, 14 times and keep on straining it. The more I do this, the better it's going to be because the more nematodes I'm going to get out of the sponge. I want to get as much out as possible. That is my mission here.
Okay, so this is what I'm making right now. This is basically called my nematode solution. So when I'm done mixing this up, which I'll give it like maybe three more sponge squeezes. Once I do like three more sponge squeezes, I'm going to add in another liter of water into this pail. So this is the last one right here. And I can see that the water is actually turned like a kind of like a cloudy color. Okay, that's it. That's it. Okay, so now I'm going to add another liter of water to this pail. This is a nice pail. It has measurements right on it so I can see exactly like one liter, two liter. I'm gonna have to turn it on. Okay, we're at two liters of water. So now my nematode mixture is complete. This much, this much nematodes will be enough for me to do my whole room. So that's my three by three bed, my four by three bed, and my two 25 gallon fabric pots. But we're gonna start out with the uh, three by three bed right here. So the next step is now for me to dump this mixture into my sprayer. All right, now that we have all the nematodes into the sprayer, it's time for us to apply it to the soil. Okay, now that we got a now that we got it all into the sprayer, we gotta tighten the lid on the sprayer. Then we gotta give it some pumps to build the pressure up inside. Cause that's how this works, is by pressure. So I'm gonna tighten it up real nice. Build the pressure in the, in the pump. Another thing, when I'm spraying these nematodes, I wanna be like stirring this, this, um, this container a lot. Because the nematodes will actually sink down to the bottom and they'll collect down there. And I just want to keep movement, keep the solution being stirred around. This is pretty easy to apply. You just got to spray the, the top of your bed. So I just want to spray right in there, get all the way around. Stick my wand right in there. Get it right underneath the straw. Just really, really spray this stuff. Make sure I'm always stirring up my solution as I do this to keep all the nematodes all stirred around. You don't want them just sitting on the bottom. So yeah, I'm gonna carry over now to the four by four bed. And the, we're gonna do the same thing. Pressurize my water sprayer, keep stirring it, and just start soaking it. Just start soaking the 4x4 bed. So what I'm doing right now is, this is like preventive maintenance. I'm gonna like prevent, try to prevent as many bugs as I can from getting in my room by adding beneficial bugs. So like I am putting bugs in my room, but these are all beneficials, right? These are all help my cause of growing cannabis gonna help any bad bugs that come because bad bugs come just as much as the good bugs come and if I already have good bugs in here the bad bugs will come and they won't be able to build a home they're gonna get their eggs are gonna get eaten right away by these nematodes and then what the nematodes miss because they're not gonna be perfect they're not gonna get every bug I'm gonna have other bugs coming in like for example I'll be putting in some rove beetles I'll show you guys all that next. Just turn around. Carry on over to one of our 25 gallon fabric pots and bud trainer. The 
cover crop is really pushing up on the straw. It's crazy how thick this cover crop grew in. A lot faster than my last run, that's for sure. So I'm sticking the, the wand right in down, right into pretty much where the soil level is. And I'm just moving it around, feed, feeding the soil, not feeding the soil, just spraying the top of the soil. Okay. It's probably good for this pot. Now we're gonna move on over to the last one. Okay, so I have another big bud pot right here that I want to spray and I have two pots right here that I planted marigolds in. Marigolds are another great plant for pests. Um, pests don't like that plant, they don't like the smell of the plant, uh, so, that, so I'm happy that I got some of them going on in this room again. So that's gonna, not even again, it's my first time growing these. but. Yeah, they're, they're supposed to be beneficial, right? All right, that's it. All right, that is how we add the nematodes. Okay, sweet. Um, I just want to give a quick shout out to Sticky. What's up, man? Joel, how's it going? Everyone in the chats, I appreciate you guys. Uh, Brody, there you are. I see you, man. Norma G, what's up? Thanks for stopping in tonight. I appreciate it. Lowe's Grows, Christina, how's it going? Aaron, what's up from Australia? Hazy Susan Scrogger, 804 Green Ranger, I'm sure he's in here. Workhorse, Marcus, what's up? Grant, Hazy Susan, Barbara, everyone on, everybody that's on Facebook. I saw Jason. What's going on, Jason? I appreciate you guys. Uh, like I said, we do, we're going to be doing two giveaways each episode now. So this first giveaway that I'm going to announce right now is from people who leave a comments after this episode airs. You leave a comment afterwards, I scroll through the comments, I read them all, and I want to tell you guys that I appreciate you all so much from the bottom of my heart. Like all the comments you guys left on my last episode was really, really positive and nice, right? Like really encouraging. I know I asked you guys to leave a nice comment, not like a mean comment, but the comments that you guys left was really, really, uh, like really rewarding really for me. Like I love reading them. I, I want to thank you all for that. So the person who I picked last week is someone who always supports so much. Um, she is always in my comments on Facebook, YouTube. She's always giving me positive vibes, positive encouragement. Um, and her name is Connie. So Connie, I know you're in here. I saw you in the chats already and you are the winner of last week's episode. So I appreciate you. Like I appreciate everyone else. You need to email me at northernscrogger at gmail.com. And, uh, and we just go from there. We start chatting and figure out how to get you your prize from Seasman. It's a pretty sweet, pretty sweet package that they're sending over everyone this season. So everyone wants to get on the live giveaway that's happening during this episode you need to you need to uh you need to hit hashtag seasman all right so let me go for a minute that was how i released my nematodes i saw in the comments there someone did say uh do you not know what about the pressure in the sprayer and do you remove the filters in the sprayer? I did remove the filter in my sprayer a long time ago, not for that purpose. It was because I was doing like, um, I was doing compost teas last season and like I guess it kept getting jammed up in my uh, filter in the sprayer. So I, I have already removed the filter in my sprayer. I've never heard anything about the pressure aspect when adding nematodes. So that's new, that's something I should look into. So thanks for bringing that to my awareness because like maybe I killed all my nematodes by adding them with that much pressure. <laughs> I don't know, but you know what? It's been working for me. I, I don't know for sure if it's working because I can't see the nematodes with my eyes. You know, I don't like look for them in my pot or in my living soil beds, but I don't really have bugs or anything. So like something's doing good. Um, well, let's get right back to it. We have two more kind of insects that I'm releasing this, this grog school season. So let's go to the second set of insects that we're doing. Okay guys, so now we're going to be releasing some of these rove beetles. These rove beetles also like to eat thrips, fungus gnats, just any kind of insects that are basically in the garden, um, even mites. So 
how you release these is you just dump them in the soil but you want to make sure that you dump them in clumps of at least like say 50 to 100 because you want them to like reproduce so they reproduce easy if they're in numbers right so when i dump them in my living soil bed i'll put like a clump here i'll put a little clump in each corner and maybe a little clump in the top um that's pretty much how i'm going to run it with the pots with my 25 gallon pots i'll probably just put like a clump right in the center and see how that works out so let's just add these up to the gardens and, and go from there. Okay, so if you just look and look right here, you see them all. There's a lot. Okay, so another cool thing about these row beetles is I'm gonna put a clump right here. Okay, then we're gonna move on to this corner over here. And put a little clump. Okay, move along, put a little clump. That's good. So both the larvae of a rove beetle and the adult rove beetle itself will feed on insects. So that's a cool part of these little guys. Rove beetles do have wings and they can fly. But rove beetles prefer to walk on the soil. That's it. So a good test we'll see this one pot didn't get as much as the other pots i have one pot that didn't get as much but the cool thing about road beetles they do have wings they can fly so they will fly around my room a little bit and go to find food but like i said they don't really like to be flying a lot they love to just crawl around the soil so that's it that's how we add the road beetles i can see some right now flying around they're gonna they're gonna establish themselves they're gonna find food to eat um decaying organic matter they, they'll eat One other quick cool little thing about rove beetles is they like to stand their ass end up kind of like a scorpion when they feel threatened or like when they're scared they like stand their ass ends up almost like a scorpion it looks pretty cool. Okay, so sweet, that is how we release the rove beetles. Pretty crazy looking insect, eh? Like up close and stuff. I remember when I first started doing the living soil, which was just last year, this is my second round with this stuff, really. Um, I always told myself that like, I don't wanna do living soil because of bugs. I don't wanna grow in organic because of bugs. Like, I don't want bugs in my grow space that's attached to my house. And like, I just, I don't want that, right? It's kind of gross, I thought, you know? But I always, wanted to do the concept of it just add water learn more stuff about the science of your plants learn more about feeding the soil and not just the roots of the plant right i'm learning how to feed soil now and like i'm maintaining the soil so it's a, it's a whole different style but i'm really happy that i i switched right now to be honest with you because i really enjoy it i, I enjoy the smells in here um it feels like nature in here to me uh what else do we have what, what was i gonna say there oh yeah so I am glad I switched. Um, releasing these bugs that I've released, I've, all these bugs that I'm releasing right now, I've, I did the same thing last episode, last year, Straw School Season 2. And I don't never had problems with bugs crawling around my house, crawling around in the grow room, flying around in here constantly. It's never been like that. They, they stay in there. Like, I don't see them. Even the rove beetles, like, when, you, when I was holding that thing in my hand, you saw them all on top and, like, for starting to fly around everywhere. Like, that's crazy, right? Once I put them in, I haven't seen these things anywhere. Sometimes when I'm looking close in my soil, I'll see them crawling around in there. 
Oh, that camera lost me. Oh, what? Yeah, I'll see them crawling around in there. But let's just jump over and watch the last bug that I'm releasing, the last predatory insect. With this thing, these things are pretty badass too. So let's jump on over and watch that one. It's the third predatory insect that we're using for straw school season three is called the Stromatio lapsus somatis. I probably did not get that word right or that name right, but that's the best that I can do. It is a predatory mite and it also feeds on fungus, ants, thrips, and other small soil organisms. So with this pack, what you want to do is add it the same way that I added the rove beetles, just in piles throughout my soil. Um, the rove beetles might eat a few of these guys, but I have a lot of them in here, so they'll, they'll figure it out on their own to establish their own living life in my beds here. So let's just get started and let's add these guys to the beds. So same thing, I want to add clumps. I want to add nice clumps of them so they can re-establish themselves, right? So I'll just go right here and I want to try to get it right on the soil, basically. So I'll, I'll move over some of the cover crop a little bit. I'll put a nice big pile right there. Okay, move them around at the touch. There we go. Same thing, come on this side of my living soil bed, open it up, put in like a nice little, little pile of them right there. Just like that, nice pile. Okay, that's probably enough for my three by three. Let's go over to the four by four. Let's find a nice spot, let's say right here. Add them right here. These guys are gonna work like a quarter inch deep in the top layer of the soil. And they're gonna be eating everything from any kind of little soil, any kind of little larvae, any eggs that any um, thrips or nants want to want to make in here, these guys are gonna go around and just eat it all up. So just more preventative maintenance, right? I'm just trying to add a bunch of preventative maintenance to my garden. Cause I don't want real bugs, bad bugs to come. This is gonna help me help fight off, help fight them off. Okay. So let's come over here, we'll add, we'll add a nice big clump right in the center of this one, just like that. This is it, right there. We come over to my next one. Same thing right in the center. We're just gonna add a nice big clump of it. Just like that. I'm gonna take a little bit out, put them right here. All right, so that's it. That's how we add the strat, let's try to pronounce it properly. Stratolopleus schematius. These are predatory mites. Let's go, baby. So that's the bugs. That's everything I'm gonna have in this room. Or, is it just a line? That is uh, for bugs. But I did add worms that we got from Vermibic. And a cool thing about this season three is that I'm gonna go live every single Thursday on my Patreon at the same time as I am tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Thursday live on Patreon. Um, I released my worms live on there this week. I couldn't keep my worms for today because they're compost worms. And with compost worms, you don't want to put in the fridge to hold on to like you do with like say bait worms or, or any other kind of worms like that, which, which I learned from the guys over at Vermibic taught me that. I thought that I could put them in the fridge and save them until this episode and right now I could release my, my worms but I wasn't able to. So there is worms in all of these living soil beds. I only put a few more in my 4x4 because it was already loaded with worms but they're there's a lot in the 3x3 and also in the 25 gallon fabric pots. Cool. Okay, so the next. That's another thing is that the guys on Patreon, I showed them like a sneak peek of what's going to be in this episode. So a few of them already saw what we have just watched here. And uh, I was actually calling Fungus Nance, Fungus G Nance for a while. Fungus G Nance. 
I have a few friends that call them gene ants too, mostly for like just a funny way, but actually I think like we actually believe that they were called gene ants and like I honestly kind of thought it was too gene ant. I didn't even know it was a silent G, so I learned something there. So thanks my Patreon members for that. And uh, this time we're going to talk about now germinating seeds because I, I got my seeds. I remember if you guys remember the end of last episode, I was saying I like, hope I get my seeds this week. I can do the germinating Well, I got the seeds the next day. So I germinated them on Tuesday. This time when I germinated my seeds, I did something different that I normally never do. Uh, I used the dark earth living soil um, right out of the bag and I put it in my, in the, um, I used the, an AC infinity propagation system. It's sitting over here on the corner. Probably wants to go over that can. There it is, it's already on there actually. But, so, what I did was I put all the living soil in there. I put the, I actually put my seeds right into the medium, 25 seeds. I, 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 uh, I planted 25 seeds. I put them right in the medium, and then I put some rice hulls on top. Let's just actually watch the video. I made a video of that, obviously, too. This one's a little bit longer because it's really informative. This is like, germinating is a tricky part of the process. A lot of people have a hard time with germinating. Um, I used to. I used to have a hard time before like, I got better and I learned like humidity is important, heat is important. Like dampness, not soaked, is important. Just little things like that. Once you once you dial in your heat, your humidity, and the dampness of your medium that you're using to germinate with, it's a game changer, and you're gonna it's gonna be flawless for you after that. So let's just get right into this video as I smoke on this joint, and we'll enjoy it together. Thanks, guys. This time we're gonna be doing something a little bit different. We're gonna use this propagation system from AC Infinity to pop our seeds this time. So I'm going to be placing my seeds directly into this dark earth living soil medium. Uh, this is kind of neat because it also comes with a little heat pad that I'm going to be setting up here in a minute. But right now we got to fill the tray full of our medium. So I'm going to take this lid off here and start filling my tray up. There's little holes in the bottom of this tray to let water escape down to this tray. So I don't really got to worry about overwatering. I just got to make sure that if I do overwater, which I won't because it's, these are the seedlings, I can lift this tray out of this tray, dump the water out. You just want to make sure you get any kind of big clumps broken up. I have a few in here, I'm just going to twist, break this up a little bit more. It's nice to have like sticks in here and stuff, but not really when I'm doing my seedlings. I, I want that to be just pure soil mixture. When it's in the living soil bed, yeah, all these little sticks and stuff that are in here, little pieces of wood, that's great. It's all going to break down in the living soil bed. But right now we're doing seedlings, so we just want as much like just nice little fluffy soil that we can get just to make it easy for the roots to travel through. Here's big chunks of biochar. Like that's beautiful stuff right there. I'm, I'm doing four slots. Four slots because I'm only growing four genetics right now. Four cultivars. So once I get it pretty much to the top, just give each one just a slight press down. Just a little bit, because I, I know it's loose in there. I don't want it too tight, because then my seedlings are not going to be growing in here too well if it's too tight, but I don't want it too loose at the same time, or else it's just gonna fall around. The seeds will just kind of grow up to a certain point, then they're just like kind of fall over, because it's just a loose medium. As you water it, it will pack, it, pack itself down as well. But I just want to give it like just a little bit, you know? And then I'm gonna give it another little top up. like so. Give it another little top up. This this top section I'll leave kind of like a little bit loose-ish. I won't, I won't pack it down or anything. This is basically just where the seed's gonna sit into. All right, now I wanna miss this. I don't want to soak this, not at all. I just want to give it a nice, fine, little mist on top, just to make it damp. Just to make it damp. Just the first, like, inch. Okay, so that's that's probably pretty decent right there. That's enough for the for these seedlings to start their thing. That's for sure. Give it just a couple little extra. Done. All right. Now we want to plant the seeds. So. First ones we're gonna plant is my Seedsman Genetics. 
and we're gonna do the uh, let's do the this is a banana jealousy it's called I use this little pointer actually to like kind of put my spot in where I'm gonna place the seedling to be I'm gonna put all five in a row so there's a row of five there's five seeds in here maybe maybe a few more I'm gonna put five in <clears throat> so let's start that right now well first I'll make my five little indents one I only want to go like maybe a quarter of an inch not even everyone says like when you put your seeds how do you put them do you put them like facing the points facing down pointy ends facing up I honestly I just kind of put them in um, I try to kind of put them in with the pointy end facing down that's always how I've been taught okay pointy end down let's see how this goes let's cover up a little bit I just have to cover up a little point a little bit I don't bury it I just I just kind of push some of the some of the stuff over top medium over top okay there's another one pointing in down once again just lightly over top barely even barely even push any kind of soil over the top of the seed once I place it in just a little skiff because I'm also going to be putting some rice hulls on here okay so I got six in this pack so since I got six in the pack, I'm actually gonna drop two. I'm gonna drop two in this last hole here. And uh, I won't grow two. If two pop out, that's amazing, but I'll, I'll kill one of them. And just let one grow. But we're gonna pop, we're gonna put two in that hole right there. See what happens. Okay, so that was banana jealousy. Now I wanna label it. Always make sure you label your seedlings. Or you're gonna forget 100%. Okay, so that's now labeled banana jealousy. All right, next one we're gonna do. We we'll stick with the seedsman genetics here. Right now, this is the Gelato BX41 or Gelato 41 BX. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make my little indent where I'm gonna place my seed. Just like so. Not deep at all, just enough to drop it in. I try to obviously aim for the center. Once again, we're gonna try to pick the best ones, but we're just gonna plant all, all of them no matter what. So I'm just gonna actually go ahead and start put, placing them in. So we got one there. Another one right there. This is a gelato, this is gonna be See what this is gonna be like. Okay, so I'm gonna put two in this hole because I actually got seven seeds. And I'll put two in this hole. Perfect. So, Gelato BX, Gelato 41 BX. We'll get that right. Done. Okay, let's go. Now we're doing the green Bodhi. The green Bodhi strain. This one is the Hazy Girl. These look very nice online. Um, I'm pretty excited to grow this stuff. This one is a five pack and you get five. So let's go ahead and make our indents first. Okay, we'll take our seeds out. definitely trying to get the pointy end down but it doesn't always pop in perfectly like that they pop either way normally right I might not get 100% germination rate here I dropped one but I'll find it it's just on the tray I usually get pretty good germination rate though pointy end down. okay hazy girl Last but not least is the Golden Haze. And once again, Green Bodhi. All right. 
seeds look nice and fat. Pretty fat, pretty dark looking. One of them is kind of lightish color. I like dark seeds myself. I like it when they're dark. Okay girls, these are all feminized seeds. Do your thing. Feminized seeds are just easier for me to scrog with because like I put my screen on I put my screen on like when uh, a month into veg and then I and then I veg for another like well yeah then I veg for another month with my screen on so if there's a male within that time of my second like when I veg for a month with the screen on if there's a male in there that just throws everything off for me and I gotta like kind of cut that male out of the whole screen it just looks so different after I do all that okay so that was the golden haze everything is all planted now I'm gonna now give this one more mist a light mist because I don't want to disturb the seeds a whole bunch right so I'm just gonna go over give it a, like a nice light mist because I do want everything to be nice and damp I want these seedlings to feel the dampness you need to get them kind of wet but not soaked just they need to be wet so I'm just gonna give a couple little shots right where the seeds all are that's good enough now I'm going to add some rice hulls on top rice hulls is just gonna lock in the moisture I don't want to put a cover crop in here and straw is a little bit too big for me to lay on this so I'm just going to actually use some of these rice hulls right here so let's I have an open spot in the bag I'm just gonna sprinkle them right on top not a whole bunch because the seeds will break will bust through this I just want to put a little bit on I don't want to make it super thick where like it totally just suffocates everything it's just gonna help lock in the moisture of the top layer of the soil and keep it nice and damp for these uh, for these seedlings to pop Okay, so now I'm going to place this tray inside the other tray that collects the water and holds the water and stuff. So just shove that aside, bring this tray right here, gently set it right in place. Done. Okay. Now, this also comes with like an extender. So this is the... This is like the lid extender. If I want to extend my lid, I can put this on first. So say you had clones, you had some clones or something that you're growing. Okay, and then you just put the lid on top of that, just like this. And then the lights, the lights just fit in nice, lay in place, just like that. One more over. I'm actually not gonna have the extender on. I'm gonna take the extender off at this moment. Well, when I start when I start the process here, you can set a schedule on it. You can set sunrise. Uh, there's there's like uh, ten different light settings, so it goes from one to ten. I'm only ever going to be using like maybe one to three. But if you had clones or something, you can have like a higher, like more light, right? So you see how that came on? Uh, like I said, you can raise the light up intensity wise. This is ten right here. Now I'm going back down to the one setting. But I'm actually not even going to have a light at this moment. I'm going to keep my light off just for like, just for the rest of today. Just keep it dark, let the seeds get damp. But first, before all that, I'm going to take off the first lid with the light. Set that on the floor for a minute. I'm going to take off my extender piece because I'm not going to use that right away. I might use that a little bit later on. I'm just going to give one quick last misting on top of these rice hulls, get the rice hulls kind of damp. Okay, now we're good. I'm not going to touch these things for like, I'm not going to touch these seeds for a few days. I'm not even, I'm not even going to open the lid. I'm just going to make sure that I keep a track of my, um, my temperature, my humidity in there. One last thing to talk about, I do have a heat mat that comes with it too. It just has a low setting to high setting. It doesn't give you numbers. So I'll just got to keep an eye on that. Now we're going to put this lid on. Okay. 
Okay, I'm gonna close up all of the vents on it because I wanna trap the humidity in here as much as possible. So those cool little vents on here, I'm gonna close them right off. Close them right off completely. Right now they're shut, okay? Now I'm gonna place it into its home. So this is the heat mat that I was talking about. It has a nice little dial on here. But the dial goes from like low to medium to high. Right now I have it set on the low. I've had it on for like probably 15 minutes and I feel the warmth on there with my hands. So I'm gonna now just set my, um, my tray on there and just kind of forget about it for a little while. So like I said, I'm gonna turn off the lights on here they don't need to be on right now okay lights are out it shows you the time on the screen you got the time that's the, if you want to run a sunrise schedule that's off you got the on position that turns the lights on and everything and you can go back to your clock and you can set a schedule timer everything like that for like how long you want your lights to be on off once i turn my lights on like this and they're on like that with the one setting go two that goes all the way to 10 I'm gonna just leave it at one for probably 24 hours I'm just gonna let them ride out once I see little things starting to sprout I'll turn this light on and I'll leave it on there for 24 hours so right now turn it back off sweet this is gonna be nice I like to put a piece of styrofoam underneath my heat mat because my floor is cold so the heat mat will actually We'll have to fight against the cold floor if you don't have a piece of insulation on your floor and then you put the heat mat on the insulation and then your tray on top of that that's going to help you out a lot to maintain your temperatures all right so there you go that's why i'm going to germinate the seeds for this run we're going to be using the ac propagation system um, i'm excited to try it out i've never ran anything like that before that's new to me uh, same concept though like i do the same kind of stuff i use a heat mat uh, I use a dome. I'll show you my dome. My domes are a lot bigger than the dome that I was just using, as you can see right here. So this is going to save me space with this new system. Um, I like the fact that it comes with nice little lights, right? It's like, it's just, everything is there, complete, small, perfect kit. And just as a reminder, if you use AC Infinity products, you can use, you can use the code SCROG at acinfinity.com to save 10% on your purchase. It also helps this channel out. So I appreciate that. All right, so yeah, like look at that dome compared to this dome. <clears throat> so since I have now been using this awesome little AC Infinity propagation system and I, I put my seeds right in, I have opened up my vents a little bit now and the, um, the light setting is at two. Let's open it up and see what they all are looking like and then we'll talk about this for a minute. This thing, I'll t give you my honest opinions on this right now, real quick. I think it's amazing. <clears throat> I, I, I put in 25 seeds, 23 popped. So only two, only one uh, golden haze and one hazy girl. Um, even in the trays that I put two little seedlings in, both of them popped under my seedsman genetics. So every single seedsman genetic seed popped, every one of them. And every one of the other ones popped from um, Green Bo Green Bodhi, except for two, which is fine. Like I, I get, having four out of five in the pack, I, I'll, I'll live with that. So all I did was just keep everything damp with a mist. Okay, just like this, my mist bottle. But this thing trapped in the humidity like any like better than anything I've ever had. So what I do now is. They stretch, right? Like they stretch a lot, um, but that happens. That happens with seedlings. I could have like had my light more of a higher intensity, but that's why they have that tray. So not or the extender. So now I'm gonna put my extender on, because right this one back seedling is actually touching the top of the lid now. So these lights aren't like burning them or anything. Uh, I cannot transplant these yet because the roots are still being built in there and it's not big enough for me to transplant. When that day comes, I'll just take the tray right out and I'll squeeze the bottom of the tray, like each, just like a normal little planter. And then there's a little hole in the bottom and I'll just like work this, the plant out when that time comes, right? 
But for right now, what I'm going to be doing in the next few days here, and I already did it to one in the back, is there's, a, there's another way to use these butt huggers right here. And uh, what I do is with my seedlings, I just take off a nice straight piece. We'll do it to one right now real quick because this one is falling over, so I don't want to like fall over too much. So I'll come to this can real quick and show you like how I actually bend these up a little bit. So before I put it in the soil, because you don't want to put it in a little container and start trying to fuck with things and bend things and manipulate this, it, well it's in there, you want to do it right now. So I just bend it over, use my finger, and I make like a little hook out of it. Just like that. It doesn't, nothing has to be perfect, because like all I'm doing is just like catching, I'm going to catch the stem. And I'm going to stick this end in the far corner of the little seedling tray that they're in, right? I'm not going to stick this and right down the shaft of the stem because not, then I'll probably mangle some roots that are in there. I'm going to stick it to the corner and I'll bend this if I have to. So let's go back over there and do this. I'm just going to do one of them for you guys because like if I sit here and do like 25 of these right now, it's probably not going to be like that fun to watch. And I'll probably start swearing and shit eventually real bad and like in a bad way. So I'll just do this one that's already leaning over. I'm going to stick this right in the very corner and then catch that, there we go, catch it. Sometimes you can even close in the end, but I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna catch it right there. Now it's not, it's not gonna fall over. I could have even went up a little bit higher with it, but so I can just bend this up now, catch it a little bit higher up the stem, right? Now we're gonna get the actual extender. I'm gonna bring this camera back a touch. And we're gonna get the extender to put on this because they're actually getting tall. I'm gonna open up all my vents right up now too. And I'll come in here now and I, you can see this fan that I have behind me, it's actually pushing them a little bit. You can see them dance right, right around now, you'll see them move a little bit. Um, I need that, that's actually a good thing because the movement is gonna make them strong. But right now they're still relatively young. I'm just gonna keep them enclosed for just like another day. And then I'll open this tray right up to my room. Where did, oh here it is. So this thing's pretty cool. It has like it has like vents on the ends, and these these things actually work really well. Like I'm telling you, the way this thing trapped in the humidity was pretty wild. So I'm digging it. I do like it. It was the easiest. It was the easiest um, germination run I've ever done, with really good, really good rate of success on my germination. I might even bump these lights up to three now. So I oh see so I just dumped so much water just out of the lid that it's been collecting. All right, done. It actually has a wicked seal. Um, that's gonna be nice. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick the best four out of these of each of each strain I have here. I have four strains. I'm gonna grow four plants in this room this time. Maybe five, maybe six on the sides. I might put a couple on the sides and just do some crazy training on them, you know, like keep them real low and just do some work on them. But uh, yeah, so we're off, you know, this is where, this is where it all, this is where things really start to take off. Like these look small now, but man, you guys saw me. I just, I just did all this germinating on Tuesday and they're already like this. So by next episode, I'll probably be, I'm thinking like I should be taking these out by then. Like they only need to be in there for another like three or four days and they're gonna have enough roots, maybe a bit longer. Like you gotta be careful on, this is the be careful transplant I gotta do. Then I'm gonna be probably putting them in something like this. I'll put them in something like this right after I take them out. And I'll make sure that I get the seedling actually right down in there so I can backfill <clears throat> around the stem because I don't want the big long stem like that that you see there. I'm definitely gonna put that deep into a pot kind of and then backfill all around that and off that stem if it's in the darkness of the soil it'll grow roots off the side. It'll grow roots right up this right up the stalk if it's underneath the soil. So that's what we'll be doing soon. This is just the process and like you guys want to see how I started all right like I could have like started strong school when I already had all my plants ready to transplant in my big pots and be like hey we're gonna be tucking in a week that I could have started straw school at that point but I want to show you right from the beginning so so far in the last in the two episodes we've done we've like pretty much set it up how you're gonna to want to set it up at home if you want to try to do this
Um, the living soil that I'm using is called Dark Earth Living Soil. So if you're in Canada, uh, I suggest you look them up. Dark Earth Living Soils, it's what I'm using for my germinating, for my seedlings. It's what's in, there's like three bags are in here. That's what's in the whole three by three and the bud trainer pots is all Dark Earth Living Soil. I also got my marigolds here. Um, yeah. Let's uh, sit down and smoke a dab because we're coming to the end of the episode so I can get a little bit silly with you guys. Take these gloves off. That's another thing. I try to handle my seedlings, especially without like, because I was touching a whole bunch of stuff during this episode, like my keyboard, a whole bunch of shit. I don't want to go touch my seedlings with my shitty hands, right? <laughs> All right. Cool. I'm just going to position my camera here real quick. Take me two seconds. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay, let's get this thing on here. Sweet. Let's get in the chats. What's going on, Jim Adams? How you doing, man? Kevin, what's up, Kevin? Eight oh four Green Ranger, JJ. How you doing? Are you guys all gonna be in the Discord tonight? I might go watch High again for a few minutes, but I'll jump in the Discord after for a couple minutes too, or maybe I'll just go into Discord and watch High again after, because they're coming on too, and I like to watch them. They have a decent channel, support them too, right? They have a good channel, not decent. But yeah, I want to thank you guys, this is awesome. So let's go into that Seasman giveaway, because how many people have got in there? We have a, around 100 people in our episode. 59. Awesome, pardon? 59. 59, so all you gotta do is hashtag Seasman. You got a chance to win some free beans, some gear, um, and also if you leave a comment at the end of this episode, that's another chance, which Connie also won that tonight. So congratulations, Connie. Rappy Grow, what's up, man? I need to pound some water. I got the pasty so bad. Oh yeah, that's, that's good stuff. <clears throat> oh, I thought he said something else. Okay, sweet. So... That was a lot of information I felt like packed packed in there. I didn't do much like live talking, live work, but that's what I said. Like I want to show you guys everything. So like I'm doing some pre-recording stuff because I can't save all this stuff till Sunday. Like I, I gotta do it when it happens. Like when that plant is ready to transplant, I gotta transplant it or else I'm not gonna be able to do how I scrog, right? Ultimately, this is all leading to scrogging. That's why it's called scrog school, but we're not at the scrogging stage yet. Um, maybe next episode I might build my screens so this week I might build my uh, screens for these two pots right here that we see and I might build my screen for that 3x3 in the corner so I'll probably go live on YouTube on my uh, Northern Stronger channel and, and just go live during a day as I build one of these screens right here for this for one of the 25 gallon bud trainer pots <clears throat> but I mean I'm gonna build I am gonna record it so we can all do it here on, on the Scrog School episode maybe three or four, I'm, I'm gonna guess like four probably. Because I have a way to go before I use my screens. Connie, thank you Seedsman for sponsoring Troy. Yes, thank you Seedsman, I appreciate it. Thank you so much for sponsoring Scrawl School, having me on your channel again, that's awesome. Thank you. <clears throat> let's, uh, let's smoke a dab. Let's smoke a dab to end it out. Norma G in the house, Mr. Awesome Badass. Mr. Awesome Badass, you had a big win the other day, I saw that. Nice little something, you won something, I remember. I don't, I don't remember what it was, but I remember you winning something. So congrats. Any of you guys use living soil? Any of you guys use living soil, use the bugs that I use? Um, tell me where you guys are all from in the chats.
Dab will do ya. <laughs> yes, they do. They do me, that's for sure. Just got done with my dab. Cheers. Thanks, man. Cheers to you, too. Hope you enjoyed. I'm just gonna get fired up. We're gonna be going down to LA at the end of this month with Basement Grow Show to uh, the PuffCon Puff Con event. That's gonna be pretty wild. We're gonna do a few stop-ins at some other places along the, on our journey, actually. It's gonna be a fun event. I'm gonna meet a lot of people there. I'm really looking forward to it. There's nothing better than meeting people in the community like at an in-person event, right? Like that's just, that just is awesome. Yeah, you know what? I gotta go raise my light intensity to number three on my uh, on my unit over there, my AC Infinity um, propagation system. And if you guys use AC Infinity and you would like to support my channel, you can use you can use code Scrog at acinfinity.com. All right, let's turn the lights up. Oh, and the, you know what's also good about this thing is that the cords are so long. So you can have the thing like on the other side of the room. Okay, we're gonna turn it up to three. So now my light side, my light setting is at three and I'm only on day, I'm on, let's reset this thing. I'm on like day, what, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. This is day five for me. And I'm already at level three. I could have put it on level three yesterday. But now I'm gonna have to keep a track of all these tall, stretchy little seedlings and put the yellow bud huggers on, support the stems so they don't fall over, just enough until I get a nice root system established. And then I can put that Transplant them in those little pots, let, let the roots build up a little bit more. They were laughing. It's gonna be awesome. I can't wait. This is gonna be a good run. My cover crops are all super, super thick. Like this, this one is just a beast. Like this cover crop is beautiful. So what I'm gonna do is when I do transplant into this cover crop, I'm going to chop it, but I'm not gonna drop it. So people say like, are you gonna do a chop and drop? Which means I'm gonna chop my cover crop and then just let it lay down in here and decay, right? I'm not gonna drop it. I'm just gonna chop it. I'm gonna take most of that outside and throw it away. I'm not even gonna save it. I don't have a worm bin or anything. So I'm not saving this. I just cut it nice and low. And then I throw it outside somewhere. I do my transplant and I make sure that my seedling or my cannabis plant is the tallest plant in the pot like that's the mission right you don't want it having to compete with anything you want it to be the dominant one so that's how low i'm going to go with the cover crop you just got to chop it right down right now i'm just like protecting the first layer of my soil i like seeing stuff grow this isn't like using up all the food in the soil it's not like it's like depleting my soil like on a massive rate or anything it's also adding to my soil too in certain aspects right <clears throat> especially when i chop it all those roots that are down now in this pot so once i chop it all those roots they're going to be start to get eaten by the soil that's what feeds your soil and i was talking about earlier is feeding the soil is like i'm going to feed my soil just by doing a chop and if i dropped it it'd feed my soil even more yeah because my worms would be eating all that but also you're asking for like maybe more bug issues if you just do chop and drops, especially with a big heavy foliage like this. If I was to drop this, it would take a long time for this to, to decay. And like, cause it's pretty goddamn thick. Like I do drop a little bit. Like when I'm chopping, I don't get everything. Like I do leave a little bit in there, but I don't, I don't leave this much. This, this would be like, this is, a, is like a big, a big load of, of stuff. <laughs> All right, so I, I almost, I pretty much failed on that dab. Oh my God, and I got up to get my tooth, or my, my thing here. Green year, thank you for the educational content, doing great as always. Hey, I appreciate that. Thank you so much for your comment. 
I saw it clean out this thing here real quick. You want to take a look at your strains? Yeah, we can take a look at the strains, yeah. I can tell you a little bit about the green. This stuff is pretty nice. So this is called, this is Green Bodhi. Good, definitely good. I, I obviously looked them up and read all about, read all about them. And um, Platinum Girl Scout Cookies Hazy Kush. That's the cross. It looks fucking amazing. So I am pretty excited. And then we got, which one is this one? Oh, the Golden Haze. Yeah, this one looks really good as well. I love the looks of those flowers. So hopefully I get those phenos and they look like mine. I look like they mine look like them. <laughs> but we got golden pineapple and hazy kush. So he uses he used his hazy kush each time, which is cool. <clears throat> Matt, what's up? Interesting episode. Thank you, Troy and Ali. Hey Connie, you're welcome. Make sure you send me that email. When I add when I add a when I add a room or switch lights, I'm going to get a few Evo 8s and 10s. That's awesome, man. Make sure you use the code SCROG. <laughs> That'd be awesome. I'm going to probably get a few of them one day, maybe, in my life. Did I miss the draw? Not yet. We're about to do it right now. The draw is coming up right now. I just want to hit a dab with you guys before I let you all go for your night. And I say thank you for watching. What are we up to? Where we at? Is that 79? Alright, let's do it. There's 74. Someone just got JC. You got right in there real quick, man. <laughs> Norma G. Awesome. That's cool. See, man? You know what? Like, everything happens for a reason. He might not be in here right now because he does a lot of work with Hi Again on their channel. Uh, so he's probably like over there doing his job and supporting them, which is awesome, right? No, he's right there. Sweet. Norma, man, you just won. Fucking random of the draw. I think like 75 people are in there. You banged it out, man. Because you support the community so much, good things happen to people that like do good things, right? So keep on being you, man. Stay positive and, and do what you do. Because that's awesome. Congratulations. So you need to email me. NorrenScrogger at gmail.com. You already have that, so just send me another email, and I know I have your address and stuff, but it's easier for me just to, if you just send me a new one, because it's just easier for me. <laughs> and I can congratulate you on there, too, so that's cool, man. All right, everyone, I think that's a wrap for Scroll School Episode 2. Uh, in the books, our seeds are germinated. We have 23 out of 25 popped in the new AC Infinity propagation system. Uh, it's my first time using it worked out awesome i have a little bit of stretch but you know what that's my first time for me to dial it in next time i'm going to start my lights off on probably number two maybe even number three i'm going to start the lights off with more intensity right off the hop uh, that might help with my with the stretching so much so it's cool like i get to work on it figure it all out so i'm happy that was awesome just, i just put my seeds right in the right in the medium i've done that before but it's not my common practice normally i just use the paper towel method and that's what i normally used to do but not anymore i'm just doing this every time from now on so, cheers everyone, have a great night. Thank you so much for being here. Keep on tucking.